Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we are back outside ready to do some more wildlife photography. Now as you can see it's an overcast day, it is the winter if you're watching this a few months after it's been released and we have the Canon 7D Mark II and the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter lens. So that's the Canon 7D Mark II, a professional camera, but it was released in 2014, so it's quite old now. And the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter contemporary lens. It is a very good lens, it's got a lot of zoom, but it is on the budget end of the long lenses. So, as I say, we're gonna go out on this winter morning and see what photographs we can get. And as always, I'm going to answer one of your comments. So Denzenis, I hope I'm saying that right. You asked, when you go out for a day of pictures, what do you usually do with your pictures that you shoot during the day? Do you keep them somewhere as memory? Yes, ultimately I put them onto a big drive and I keep them on the SD cards. I keep them as memory and I make them backed up, especially the really good ones. The NAF ones, not so much. I also do occasionally get them out again to use on my Instagram go follow me, the link is in the description. I put them on my website, on my portfolio. Again, link in the description. And I use them in my Etsy shop if you want to go and buy them, link in the description. So thank you, Denzenis, for this reason to plug. But on a serious note, yeah, I keep them all on memory. And all of the average photos I take on these walk just go onto a big drive and sit there until I need them again, which realistically might never be. So that is what I do with my photos after a day of shooting. And so now let's go and do a day of shooting so that I can do that with more photos. And we've got our first sighting. We've got a flock of Canada geese in this field behind me. They're all the way at the back. Now, as you can see, I've got my camera here. I've set it up on a tripod and it is a heavy setup. Now the Canon 7D Mark II in itself is a very big camera. The Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter lens is very light as these lens go. The sports lens is much heavier. However, it is still a heavy setup and balancing it is relatively difficult on a ball head, which I've got here. It's not the most heavy duty tripod, but that's because I'm going on a long hike and I don't want a heavy tripod. Now, as you can see on the back of the screen, I have it recording. We are shooting video on this lens, which I don't normally do. I normally only take photos on this camera, but because we've got the tripod and these geese are so far away, a photo isn't gonna be good. Whereas when they're further away, video still works very well. So I'm just getting a bit of footage of these geese. I almost got a photo of a wren. There was a wren and it was on the bushes, hopping around. It kept on going behind leaves and the wren is one of the smallest birds in the UK. And so one leaf totally gets rid of the entire bird pretty much. And wasn't I, now I see a yellow wagtail or a gray wagtail. So I'm gonna put you down. Oh, where's he going? No. He flew away. This is a thing with wildlife photography. You have to be so on it. They're there for a second and then they're gone. And obviously I'm putting myself at a disadvantage by vlogging everything because I've got you guys in one hand and then I have to put you down. I have to tell you things that I can't take a photo. Now I love doing this vlogging, but it does mean we miss opportunities like that gray wagtail. So I'm gonna keep my eyes peeled and hopefully we'll find another one. Now there is a robin just down here. You won't be able to see him, I'm sure, because he's only a robin and this is a very wide camera. But I took some photos of him sitting up on this fence. He was right on that bend and stayed there for a long time, did a lot of singing. Now, obviously, it's quite gloomy today because it's the winter. And so I started, I took some photos at a shutter speed of 800. He's gone now, so I'm gonna go down this path. I took some photos at a shutter speed of 800 to ensure that I froze the frame, but because it's a high shutter speed, it meant I also got a high ISO, which means there'll be lots of grain in those images and they could be quite dark. So then I gradually, as he stayed there longer, I gradually stopped it down and I went eventually down to a shutter speed of 160. 
at a length of 600 millimeters. Now this is very risky and I wouldn't advise it if you've got the lighting for it, don't do that because you're gonna get lots of blurry images. But because he was there for a long time, I could just release the shutter and just let it go ham on images. That's another great thing about this camera. It can do 10 frames per second and hopefully some of them will be nice and sharp even though it's on a low shutter speed. So here are those photos and judge for yourself. And we just got some photos of a moorhen. He was on the opposite bank of the canal, and so he was quite a distance away. And they really hug the edge and go underneath bushes. Now you can see there's lots of overhanging vegetation here, which means there's lots of cover for the moorhen to slip in under the bushes and hide away, and obviously it's dark. Now the sun has also come out, as you can see, which means we've got a lot of contrast between the light and the dark, making the photos quite difficult. But when it did go in the sun, it meant we had more light and so could get a few good photos. Now the photos aren't that scenic because on the side of the canal there's this black lining which I'm assuming is so that the bank doesn't erode but it means that the photos aren't too photogenic but I'll stop talking about the photos and I'll show them to you now. There is a kingfisher who was just on that tree. Now I had you in first person when I was taking photos. I got a few photos, but there was quite a strong reflection from his face from the sun. Now he flew across and I don't know if you will have been able to see that or not. Either way, I've moved a little bit further down the bank and I'm hoping that I'll get a glance of it soon. I saw it fly across. It hasn't flown down the river but I've lost sight of it. So I'm just waiting here to see what I can find. So I'll put you back into first person and let's see if we spot it again. Now, when looking for kingfishers, you have to listen. You've got a lot of listening. Now, ironically, because they're really bright, you'd think you'd see them, they blend in really well. Unless they're in the sun, they blend in really well, even though they're bright. It's a long tail tit flying around. Oh, there's another one. In fact, there's a whole flock of long tail tits flying over, but that's not the point. You have to listen for two things. One is the plop as they hit the water. That means they're fishing, which is excellent because if they're fishing, it means they're going to stick around, catch a fish. And once they catch a fish at a perch, they're likely to come back to it because it's been successful. The other thing you want to listen out for is a really high pitched shriek. It's, it's not a very nice noise. It's just a really high pitched shriek they make and then they fly. They normally give the call before they fly off. Now, there's a whole, there's grey tits, blue tits, a whole flock of tits and songbirds have just come in and they're all flying around. So they're clearly not really paying attention to me. As I say, I'm crouched down here on the floor in amongst a load of vegetation and I am dressed in green. So I'll put my, my little camo up and we'll keep waiting. Hopefully, hopefully it'll come out. The kingfisher might have moved on, to be honest. I, I imagine I'd have seen it by now. Um, but yeah, we're going to have a little bit more patience and see what we get. Okay, so we're now going on a quick run because I thought of a place further upstream in the direction it was going. And if we're quick enough, we've just got to beat it there. So, little jog. People think I'm crazy, but it's all for the photos. Whew. Running is hard enough. Carrying all this equipment makes it a lot harder. I'm almost there. Now I really hope oh, we're here. This bridge, a great viewing point. This is the same river We've just come quite a long way up the river. It's a hasty run, I'm out of breath. But now we're just gonna have to stand and wait. Now I've got a good vantage point over both this side of the river and the other side. So even if it's gonna come from this side, even if it comes from this side and carries on and lands down there, I should still be able to get it. Now I am a long way away, so 
unless it lands really close, we're not gonna get the best photo. But to be honest, I just wanna see it again. So hopefully it's making its way this way and we will see it very shortly. So after sitting on the bridge for ages, setting up the camera, got a few photos of some buzzards, almost got run over by a golfer, and then took some photos of the golfer, I decided I'd been there for long enough and so we are now back. I waited for about half an hour and nothing showed up, so either he'd already passed through or gone to a different river, which is a shame, but we still got some awesome photos. Now I still got a lot of countryside to cover before we're back, so I'm sure we'll find something else, but until we do, let's just keep walking. And because it's Britain, we found another robin. Now this robin was in amongst some ivy and there was some holly, I think it was some holly berries, some red berries, I don't know what it was, but it was a beautiful plant and it really gives me Christmas card vibes. A bit of snow in there and it would have been perfect. So here are the photos. You can see there's the robin and then the background's beautifully blurred out. Now the zoomed in ones, you can see, you can see the bird a lot better. And again, I zoomed out for context. This is something I'm gonna be trying to do more because I think as a photographer, it's good to develop our skills and try different things. And so I'm gonna try and include the context. I've got plenty of close-up shots of birds, but getting them in different environments adds something more to the photo. And we're now on a farm. And last time I was here, the crops were all really tall. They were taller than me. And all of the birds would be inside these crops. And it was impossible to get photos because there was vast amounts. I mean, you can see this is a very large farm and all of the birds were in the middle of these huge crop fields. Well, clearly, those crops are gone. We now have the opposite. We have just barren spaces of kind of muddy straw, and that means now there's just no birds here. So we've kind of gone both extremes, and now hopefully the birds will start coming back. They'll go on the bushes, and these plants will kind of grow back a little bit. Hopefully they'll come and peck the seeds from the ground if there are any leftover seeds and we'll see something but I don't think we will today because it's very freshly cut clearly and everything's been disturbed. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I hope you enjoyed coming with me, seeing how I take my photography. I gave you a few tips. I showed you my photos and we can all learn together. I hope you had fun. I definitely did. And it didn't rain on us, even though the sky is still gray. If you want to see more of what I do and more photos, go follow my Instagram. It's new and <laughs> I don't have many followers. Not that followers matter. It's what I post that matters. And we're going to put some awesome posts on there. It's T-A-W Photography UK. So if you remember the Photography UK, then you just need to remember T-A-W. It's pretty easy. Go follow, share it with your friends. Let's get it growing. And go visit my shop if you want to buy some of the prints. I know we've taken some awesome photos today, particularly some of the Robin when it was in the Ivy. I'm sure one of them will make it onto the shop. Links are all in the description. So thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. I don't know why I do that at the end of every video. It's kind of become a thing now where at the end of the video, I just swoop, swoop the camera down. It just feels cool. Anyway, peace out.